What's up everybody, last night we got Secret Invasion episode 2 and just like that we're a third of the way through the limited series. While I enjoyed the episode, I did think it was a tad bit weaker than the first, but it's some incredible things that the premiere did not. We're going to talk about it all, what's going on with Nick Fury, whose side is Gaia on, and how badass is Sonya. We'll get into all of that and more, but first I want to give those who haven't seen episode 2 and stumbled upon this video, fair warning is this will be a full spoiler review. You can stick around if you don't mind being spoiled, but if you do, you can subscribe to the channel today or leave a like on the video so you can make your way back once you've seen the episode, and if you do that, make sure you let me know how you're enjoying the season so far too. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. As we always do, we'll kick it off with the opening sequence that shows us why Gravik is the way he is. We travel back to 1997, where young Nick Fury and Talos are organizing the small group of scrolls on Earth. Gravik has just arrived after he piloted a ship on his own as a child after his parents were murdered in the Kree Scroll War. The first thing this damaged child witnesses is Nick Fury's promise to them as he told the group that if they took the form of humans and helped protect Earth, he'd find them a new home with the help of Carol Danvers. We then jump back into the present as it's revealed it was Talos who got Fury out of the bomb site in Moscow, not someone else like one of Sonya's men or a different scroll, and the credits start. I think it was a bit too obvious that Fury is going to be Gravik's origin, so I wasn't super impressed by this week's opening sequence. However, I was losing my mind over who took Fury because it wasn't Talos' normal form, so I didn't think it was him. I'm just glad to know that Nicholas J is A-OK. -okay. Now let's get into the rest of the episode, and I'm going to start with Gravik and Gaia. I thought about giving each character a section, but they do almost everything together this episode, so I think they work together. I got the vibe that these two are very close. I kind of wrote it into my head canon that he took her in and made her feel at home, more so than he does with others because of who her father is, but that seems to be contradicted in the episode because it feels like she betrays him and maybe isn't really on his side anymore after learning about her mother. Gaia, so far, is the character that is taking my brain out of my head and just mashing it in with a baseball bat. However, it seems Gravik is doing that to her as well as when they get back to the compound, she sneaks around, following what seems to be Gravik's right-hand man into a lab where we get a major tease that's confirmed later on. But we're going to talk about it right now because why not as she overhears two doctors talking to him about their experiments which leads her to do some digging where she finds out they're trying to make super scrolls. So far they've accumulated the powers of Groot, a frost giant from Jotunheim, Cole Obsidian from Infinity War, and Extremis, which is Aldrich Killian's powers from Iron Man 3. These four powers alone explain why Gravik said he's not worried about the Avengers and also, if he starts making Super Scrolls, the Avengers will only make the situation worse, as Nick Fury said. The final big thing with them this episode is they go to rescue a fellow Scroll who was captured at the bombing. The fight scene in the meat room is really cool, especially how they start it, but unfortunately for the Scroll captive, Gravik has no faith in him that he kept their secrets. But remember when I was saying earlier that Gaia was betraying Gravik, or at least I thought she was? Well, it's right here because she hops out of the car and makes a phone call, then when they're driving back, that one of their safe houses gets raided. But because of the timing, Gravik blames and then executes the scroll that was captured, and you can see the guilt on Gaia's face. Alright, before we get into the final section diving into Nick Fury, I wanted to continue the brief section from last week, acknowledging three performances I thought were superb, in this episode. First up is Don Cheadle. He gave a hell of a performance as Rhodey, who everyone seems to think is a scroll. I'm not so convinced. Anyway, he delivers some powerful lines during the scene in the pub with him and Fury, especially when he fires Nick. All I gotta say is I hope he's in every scene, in every episode, even though he won't be, and I can't wait for Armor Wars. Then there's Olivia Coleman because oh my god, Sonya's a lunatic. I know we just got the Flash, but if we ever get a true Flashpoint, get her to play Martha Wayne as a Joker because she's nuts. I love her character, and much like Rhodey, I hope you get a ton more of her as the show goes on. And finally, Samuel L. Jackson. I was so so on his performance in episode 1 as much like Nick Fury returning to the planet, it kind of felt like he was easing back into the role, but maybe that was intentional now that I think of it like that. Either way, he stepped up in this episode and showed everyone why he's the lead of this series and that's good news moving forward. And notice how I saved Sam Jackson for last there? Yeah? That's called transition, folks. So let's close out the video talking with Nick Fury. It's a crazy episode for him as he's just got issues with everyone he talks to. Starting with one of his only remaining allies, Talos. The two are on the run after the Moscow bombing and while they're on the train, Fury finds out Talos has been lying to him. You could say lying, or you could say withholding information. Either way, Talos has not informed Fury that the scroll count on Earth has risen to over a million strong. He does reassure him though that they're not all with Gravik, but that doesn't really lighten the blow for Fury as he explodes in anger with him and tells Talos there's enough fighting between the humans, they don't need to fight the scrolls too. He pours every last drop of gas on that fire though, telling Talos Earth is too crowded for the two groups 
and so is the room. He then encounters his next hater of the episode as he goes to see Maria Hill's body be sent back to the States. He speaks to Maria's mom, and to no shock at all, she blames Fury for her daughter's death, saying Maria would have gone to war at the gates of hell for him, and he let her die. But that's not the last scolding he'll get as he finds Rhodey and meets up with him in what Fury assumes to be two old buddies chatting, but Rhodey is not on the same page. He's furious with Fury over this Moscow situation, and even considering turning him over to the Russians. Fury tries to play the who got you your job card, but Rhodey's having none of that and throws it right back in Fury's face. Not only is he done with Fury's BS, but the government is done with Fury as Rhodey happily relieves Fury of his duty. Fury departs, stunned by what happened, and drives off, and I'm not sure where he goes, but it's obviously a house that's familiar because he walks straight in, but it's revealed it's his house as we see a scroll in the kitchen making dinner only for it to be revealed as he turns the corner. It's his wife, portrayed by Charlene Woodard. Some people ran to defend him saying it's a scroll friend of his helping him out with the loss of his wife. Well, guess what? You suck. It's 2023 and Nick Fury is scroll sexual and it's canon. In all seriousness though, I thought Fury was great this episode and I'm really curious to see what happens the next four weeks as I've stayed out of spoilers for the entire show, so I'm going in blind. And that'll do it for this episode 2 breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe I found something you missed while watching. I know I usually do when I do my second watch, but man, it'd help if these weren't 2 a.m. drops. Anyway, let me know what you thought about episode 2 of Secret Invasion down in the comments below, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next 4 weeks of coverage, and make sure you have a great day.